Hello and welcome back to the Heartmore podcast. Um, I can't remember which episode this is because I'm doing this on a bit of a whim. Um, but yeah, my name is Stacey and I am a knitter, crocheter, sometimes odd little bits and bobs crafts. Um, and yeah, I'm the face behind the Heartmore podcast. Um, you'll have to excuse my dishevelled state today. Um, we're at that sort of, it's New Year's Eve today. Oh, I know what day it is. Uh, we're at that bit, that sort of time of the year between Christmas and New Year when I haven't straightened my hair, I haven't put makeup on, um, I'm barely getting dressed every day. Um, but <laughs> I do know that it's New Year's Eve today, so I hope you've all had a wonderful Christmas. Um, and by the time you watch this, hopefully you've all had a lovely New Year. Um, but yeah, so I'm a bit I managed to put a bit of lipstick on just so um, it didn't look quite so uh, dead to the world. But, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hi. How are all you? How are all you? Totally not with it today, as you can tell. Let's try and get back on track. And we haven't even started. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Heartmore. Um, and I do have an email address. It's heartmorepodcast at gmail.com. So if you have any questions or want to chat or just say hi, um, Instagram or email is probably the best way to get hold of me um, or comment below. Um, you will be pleased to note I am not on the Lensip today. In fact, I have down here in a lovely, um, you can't see, a uh, hot berry tea. Um, I don't like normal teas, um, but I do like a nice berry fruit infusion. Um, so I won't be pulling lots of faces today. Um, I quite like this. I don't like Lemsip, but I'm sure if you've watched my last podcast, you gathered that. Um, Lemsip's a yuck. Um, what can I tell you? What else do I need to say? I am based in the southwest of England, in Devon. Um, my husband has taken the kids out today, so this is my opportunity to film. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get one done before Christmas, and I did only do one week of Vlogmas. Um, but I'm just rubbish at remembering to record when we go out and do things. Um, we did do stuff, <laughs> did have a lovely December and a lovely Christmas, um, but I totally forgot to record. Um, so don't have, what else, what else, what else? Don't have too much to show you today. Um, obviously December was quite busy with Christmassy things. Um, I've got a finished object and a work in progress quite a bit of happy mail um i got some lovely i got lots of lovely yarn for christmas um so i will show you that at the end um and i thought i'd talk a bit about some of my plans for january and the new year and i have the winner on the last podcast i um had a pattern up for grabs from the lovely bexy norms um the heavenly peace socks so I will announce the winner of that as well um oh, I had something I wanted to say oh <laughs> welcome back <laughs> to all my uh to all my lovely subscribers and viewers um and if you're a new viewer a new subscriber then hello you're also welcome um I hope you don't find me too absent-minded today this I would like to say it's not normal um I'm a little bit more absent-minded than, than usual. I'm completely blaming it on, what, what, what do people call it, Twixmas? The bit between Christmas and New Year? Completely blaming it on that. We're all back to school and work next week. Um, and I have deliberately decided to just forego all life normality until then. Um, but I have managed to get all my Christmas decorations down. I don't like to go into the new year with them up. I like to start my new year completely fresh mind, fresh, I'm not going to say fresh body. It's not that. Um, with a fresh mind and a fresh thought. <laughs> um, yeah, I like to go into the new year like that. So all my decorations are down. So I have been busy this week. Um, but yeah, so let me... I did. I do have a finished object, but I can't show you it because my daughter's wearing them. But I did finish her stripy socks. Um, they were the ones in the rainbow heatwave, heatwave rainbow. I can't remember the the details. Um, but the stripy socks that were sort of grey with 
hot rainbow colours in. Um, I will put details of all patterns and things that I talk about in the drop box, information box below, <laughs> so you can see there. Uh, but I do have a finished object. Um, it's It wasn't started at the last podcast, so this is a started object and a finished object. Uh, but these are my fluffy bed socks. Oh, look at those. I'm going to give you... I've got two. Let me just put this one down. This one's got all my um, stitch markers on so I can count count how far I've gone because I didn't... I was playing the yarn chicken with this. I didn't know how far I'd go. But I'll talk about that in a minute. So let me put that one down and I'll show you this one. Um, really, really beautiful yarn. Um, pinks and blues. The lighting in here is really bad today because it's cloudy but yeah pinks and blues um so i used some yarn i, I got in a d stash so i don't know it was unlabeled so the pretty sort of base color is um, a beautiful pink and blue and speckly sort of yarn um, and i held it with a undyed mohair i so i held the four ply double and mohair so with three strands in this sock um I thought, I wasn't sure what, so I've been using, so there, uh, there, there, start again. So holding the two strands double made it DK, two, two strands of four ply made it DK. Um, and I've done the DK socks before with um, Crazy Sock Ladies Vanilla DK pattern. Um, so I decided to make them fluffier for bed and added in the strand of mohair, um, but it didn't change the pattern so I suppose in theory I could have gone up a needle gone up sort of a bit of a needle size because it would have been bigger or reduced the number of stitches I cast on I didn't because I deliberately wanted them slightly slightly loose because if I'm going to wear them in bed I don't really want them tight so <laughs> all that to say I used the crazy sock lady DK vanilla pattern again um, I cast on 48 stitches I used 3.5 DPNs um, I did 15 rounds for the cuff and when I had to count on the other sock sorry 20 rounds um, for the leg slip stitch heel flap and gusset um, and then I just knitted to the toe uh, and I did a wedge toe um, and I had about three grams of yarn left um, quite a lot of the mohair left um, but out of a hundred gram skein I had about three grams left so that is my now go to that, that those are what I, you know my measurements for my DK sock um if I show you on this one um you can see you just about see the stitch marks so there's 10 20 for the leg and then that's where I started the heel and then I did another 10 20 30 40 50 so all together it was 70 rows before I started the foot and that includes all the gusset and everything so yeah 70 70 rounds between the bottom of the cuff and the start of the toe um, and that is a size 6 UK size 6 sock on DK that fits me so yeah um, I'm gonna wear these in bed tonight now that I've shown them to you um, they're so soft and they're really really good comfortable fit so I think I will be making more, um, more of these. And it was, it was. I'm going to say it was easy knitting with three strands. It was absolutely fine knitting with the three strands. Um, but I, I did a cake, a yarn cake, and I took from the inside and the outside at the same time. <sighs> Got tangled more than I want to think about. Um, I should have done just two balls of fifty grams and done it that way. And I will next time. But for me, taking from the inside and the outside at the same time, it just it and I and I had to cut it and re re cake it twice because uh, it just kept tangling up. Now maybe that's just my ball winder and maybe the, the way I did it because I'm sure I've done it before and it's worked fine. But it just did not like it. Um, so yeah, won't be doing that again. Uh, and yeah, and that's so that's my finished pair of socks. Um, and then the only other, since I finished those, the only other thing I've been working on is my striped sweater by Andrea Mary. It's over here. Excuse me. It's not in a, it's not in a bag or anything. So I've literally just been, um, 
knitting on it whenever I sit down. Um, so, yes, I think I mentioned this in the last podcast, or maybe the one before that. Uh, maybe I hadn't been working on it on the last podcast. But this is the Stripe Set Sweater by Andrea Mowry. Um, hang on, it's all, it's not blocked or anything, so it's all curling up at the bottom. I'm going to try and show you, but um, it's all curled up again at the bottom. Yeah, so this is my sweater so far. So I have finished the body. I have an arm, uh, which I finished last night. Hello. Um, and <laughs> I've just started the other arm. Um, I... I talked about this before but I'll just I'll, I, I made a mistake um I forgot what size I was knitting so on the back can you see I just decided to decrease and I just decreased too rapidly and I've got this like sort of excess of yarn at the back it creates this rather fetching lump um but this will just be a jumper I wear in the house so I'm not particularly bothered it looks really nice from the front um, I knit, I've knitted this exactly so far to pattern. The only thing I changed um, is you're supposed to do a lot more decreases down the arm. So I decreased, I did three decreases, one, two, three. Um, and then I knitted straight down the rest of the arm and then just did a rapid decrease on the last row um, before the cuff. So I didn't want it too fitted on the bottom of my arm. I don't mind it fitted at the top of my arm. So... Like I said, I decreased for the first, I did the first three decreases um, and then I just carried on straight. So yeah, you can see I didn't really, sorry, I've dropped my yarn, decrease. Um, the yarn I'm using, see if I can find a ball band, is Let Lopi, which is the Icelandic yarn um, by Istex. And that is the ball band. Let Lopi. Um, it's 100% wool. Uh, it is quite scratchy yarn. Um, I won't wear this against my skin. I will wear it over a t-shirt. I think it'd be alright like on my arms and, and around my neck but it is, you know, it's a proper wool wallet. It smells like sheep, um, which I love. Um, and I've used three different colours. Um, you can see the dark blue, the sort of medium blue and this is actually a light blue. It comes across with the blues, it comes across grey, but when you see it separately, it is like a pale blue. Um, so I've used the three different colours. Um, let's see if I can find the ball band with the colours on. So I've got like 100 ball bands in here. Where are we? I'm just going to find the three different lot numbers. One, oh, that's one, that's two, and that's... There's three, look, I found all three of them. Um, so the three different lot numbers are... That one, that one, and that one. Oh, sorry, drop one. Um, yeah, so that's what I used. Um, it's been a really nice, easy pattern to knit. I've had no problems apart from my own mistake of having the wrong number of stitches and then, yeah, just decreasing them way, way too quickly. Um, but I'm hoping to finish this arm in the next week and then I will have, and then I've got like a million ends to sew in. Um, I hate sewing in ends. I actually do hate sewing in ends. And uh, this is the first sweater I've ever knitted for myself and I've done a stripy one, which obviously has a million ends. Um, so I picked that well, didn't I? So yes, this is my current work in progress. Um, I haven't got any other active works in progress. Um, I will go back to some of my old ones um, once I finish that sweater and pick up some of those. Um, sorry, I can see myself and I can, my fringe just looks so bouncy. Um, yeah, oh, and I'm knitting that on, I've knitted it on four mils, four mil circular needles and I'm using four mil TPNs for the arms, uh, four millimeter and I'm knitting size four. Um, ultimately, <laughs> once I remembered what size I was knitting, I'm knitting size four um, and I've tried it on and it is a nice fit for me. So that's good. I didn't do a gauge swatch or anything. I'm rubbish at things like that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to really just knit and practice and see what I could come up with. And I have learned a lot. Um, so 
that's really rubbish, isn't it? Because that's it for the knitting content. Um, so <laughs> let's talk a little bit about plans for next year, um, which will tie in a little bit with some of my acquisitions. Um, so I'm not doing a make nine as such. Um, I I want to finish off. So I'm knitting the, I want to finish off some of my works in progress. So I'm going to work on my Bolton Pass shawl um, by Sebastrico, I think. Um, I'll put it down below. Um, the Bolton Pass shawl. I'm working, I've got, I can see it up there on the bookcase. Um, my weekend, oh my God, how can I not remember? It's the weekender. I'm sure it is. But Andrew Mowry that I'm working on. Um, I've got a pair of mitten mitts, fingerless, fingerless gloves that I'm working on. So I want to get those finished. And I've decided for January, I'm not going to do this whole fresh start. New, I mean, I am going to cast on new projects. Um, but I always do my December knitting far too late. I leave my gift knitting far too late. I start in September. Um, but that's when I want to knit jumpers and stuff. So I'm going to utilise January. I'm going to extend my sort of festive knitting period. And I'm going to utilise January to knit the gift knits that I just didn't get done. So um, I've got, I want to do a cowl for my daughter. Um, I want to do a cowl for my mother-in-law. Um, I might make a start on the Christmas socks for the girls for next year. And um, the feet are only going to go up like another size or so. So that's fine. Um, yeah, and I just want to get on with some Christmas gift knitting for next year, for later on next year. Because um, I just don't want to be doing it in December, September when I want to start knitting jumpers and, and things like that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to be participating in um, Ollie and Bella and Starry Eyes Alley are hosting a cosy blanket along. I think that's what they've called it, a cosy blanket along. I'll, again, I'll put the details below um, on Instagram um, and on Ravelry. Um, so if you pop along there and um, all the details will be there. But basically it's... Um, working on a blanket you don't have to finish it it's only running for january and february so the idea is just to take part knit a blanket for those two months so you don't have to finish it in those two months you don't even have to have started it as long as it's less than 50 percent started i think um you can do that so i am planning is my yarn here yes so um i'm going to be starting a new blanket in january for this mal it's going to be a year-long blanket but I'm going to start it in January and um, join in with the blanket along. So I have decided to do join in with um, Blue Fern Yarns um, Yarn Club for next year. Um, basically, she's picking she picks an image and then she dyes the pictures to match that image. Um, and I'm going to do mine in DK. Um, so I've already bought January's and I've ordered February's because she does them like a month in advance so that you've got the yarn ready. For to start in that month um so this is or she's calling it her palette set so this is january's palette set from blue fern yarns from shannon um and it was based off an image that she posted on her instagram page and they're really beautiful colors um you can see like there's like a cream like a pale gray like a pale lemon more of a sort of pale nudie color and then like this light gray um, it's darker than that one. Um, and I've gone for the DK. That's a label, Blue Fern Yarns. Can you see that? Um, I've gone for DK and I'm going to make a crochet blanket with these. Um, I'm going to sort of do my own sort of design thing. Um, so I think I'm going to make each one of these will be made in... It's in front of my face, you can't see me. Each month I will make into a square um and then I think that's what I'm gonna do yeah each one is gonna be made into a square and then at the end of the year I will put all the squares together um, I just need to decide how 
I want my square structured um, and what the stitch and what crochet stitch I'm going to use and how I'm going to structure the, the colours within the, the crochet square that I'm going to do. I need to decide that because I want to cast this on tomorrow or New Year's Day. So I need to, get, need to get these wound up today, find my crochet hook and decide on a pattern. So that is my first cast on of the new year. Um, I also, for Christmas, uh, my parents-in-law, sorry, there's crinkling. It's exciting. Uh, my parents-in-law um, gave me some money and said, spend it on yarn. Aren't they wonderful? Don't we all want parents-in-law like that? Um, so <laughs> I decided to splurge and order some linen quill from Pearl Soho in New York um, to make the half and half wrap. So I thought if I'm going to make the half and half wrap by Pearl Soho, which everyone has been talking about, I'm very late to the party. Um, I thought I might as well just order the linen quill. It, you know, it really wasn't that much for postage. Um, and I, you know, I got six, six skeins. I got three of each colour because so I'm going to make the extra large one. Um, so let me show you what I got. Oh, it's so squishy. Um, this. Oh, look, look, look. Really, really beautiful. So, yeah, it's Linen Quill by Pearl Soho. Um, and I have, it's 50% fine Highland wool, 35% alpaca and 15% linen. And I have gone for the colourway oatmeal grey and chestnut red. Oh, look at that red. That's so pretty. Um, so these are gonna, this is gonna be my half and half wrap, and I've got three skeins of each. Um, so at some point in the new year, might not be January, might wait till February. Um, oh, it's come loose. Don't come loose, go back. At some point in the new year, I'm going to be casting this on. Um, so I've got it all in here all my skeins so that was my main christmas present from my um, in-laws so that is another january project um i also want to make the whitmore sweater which i have bought the pattern for already um the whitmore sweater at some point this year um i want to make um i'm going to do the heavenly peace socks by becky norman um I've got the pattern for those um, and I've got the yarn ready to cast those on. So those are going to be the next socks I cast on. Um, I want to do a colour work sweater. I want to do a really nice Christmas colour work sweater. Um, I've seen one that I like with reindeers across it. Um, I'll put the I'll put a picture in here um, with the details. So I want to do that. And I haven't got the yarn for it yet, but you know. I'm sure I'll find it in the year. Um, there's also a really beautiful crochet Christmas blanket that I want to do, and I think that's going to take me all year. So again, I'll put a picture up here. Um, really beautiful, um, yeah, crochet Christmas blanket. So I want to start that and work on that throughout the year. Um, and that's quite a lot of projects, isn't it? Um, and then little bits and pieces sort of interspersed in between um, whatever I fancy casting on. But those are the main things I'd really like to achieve and get knitted by the end of 2022. Um, so I will show you some of the stuff I got for Christmas. Um, it's not, it is, it's not that much really. I bought most of it myself and then gave it to my husband to wrap up for me because he just would not have had a clue. <laughs> I did get some other lovely presents. I got like a lot, we live in Plymouth, we live in Plymouth. Um, so I got a whole Plymouth gin set, some slow gins and glasses, um, and oh, a little, what are they called? The little metal things that you put alcohol in and then drink out of it secretly. Um, I can't remember what you call them, but I got one of those and I've never had one before. So I'm looking forward to walks on the beach and I'm going to hide it in my, hide it inside my coat pocket and drink. <laughs> I'm not, I don't drink a lot, but just a little, you know, a little bit of slow gin when I'm walking along. Um, what are they called? Um, so I got one of those. Um, I got a nice watch off my daughter. Um, and oh, I got this. This is sort of knitting related. I got this off my mum. Um, you might have seen these, but it's a, I had like a light for when you're knitting. So this is like, um, 
this is like velvet so it doesn't hurt the back of your neck and then you've got these and they bend oh turned it on hang on um they bend all over the place so you put it on your neck and then there's like buttons and it's like a light so you can see your knitting without having like a big light on to distract so my husband doesn't get annoyed um and they've got like three different levels of brightness so you can have them and that's going to really annoy you um have them really bright anyway my mum got me that so that's really nice um i've been using that already um okay uh before christmas i have one acquisition that i bought myself before christmas and that is this um hearth sock by woolly mammoth um so emma at woolly mammoth um did she call herself fiber yeah woolly mammoth fiber co um and she's calling this her hearth sock and basically it's a non nylon non superwash sock base um, that she says is really sturdy and really good for socks. Um, so I ordered this in the, so it's, it's 50%, it's four ply, it's 50% Jacob, Jacob, 50% BFL. So it's hundred percent, um, wool. It's sourced, spun and made in the UK, um, dyed in Northern Ireland. And this colony colorway is Peony 5. Um, it's coming up a little bit ready on the screen. It's slightly more purpley than this. Um, but I'm, I want to give this a try uh, and just see how they wear. So I want to make these up at the beginning of the year and yeah, just see how this half sock is going to wear up. Um, so I've got that. Um, and then everything else is Christmas gifts. So let me start with this one. So um, they would do lots of lots of places have started doing like lucky dips. Um, so this is Rainbow Fusions and they did a lucky dip. So you just go on, I can't, I can't remember how much it was, um, but it works out about £10 skein. So it, it is really good value, but you don't know what you're getting. So it came in this lovely tie-dye rainbow bag. Look at that. Love that bag. Um, and in here I got, this is all from Rainbow Fusions. So I got this lovely um, grey neon rainbow, it's called. And this is Peruvian, 100% Peruvian Highland 4-ply. Um, and it's got a little, see that little stitch mark on the little lolly? Can you see it? There we go. Um, so this is, it's really, really fat for a 4-ply. But yeah, Peruvian Highland wool. So I'm really excited to use that. Um, I also got this uh, really beautiful um, mohair silk. So it's 72% kid mohair, 28% silk lace weight and it's just called rainbow look at that the beauty of these um sort of quite often with these lucky dip kits is you it's different yarn bases that i've not used before and i really really want this year to be the year that i explore i explore lots of different yarn bases and find out what i like best and what you know and um, which yarns i like to knit with and what they're good for um, i'd really like to look into yarn bases a lot more um so i've got that beautiful lace one and I got this, oh, look at this, look at the size of this. <gasps> it's huge. Um, so this is super 100% superwash merino. Um, it's DK and it's called Summer Breeze. Look at that, that's gonna make a beautiful pair of DK socks. I can see it. Um, yeah, really lovely, love that one. It's got another little, uh, where are we? Pink lolly stitch marker on that one. Um, and then I also got this one here which is a lovely fun colour. This is called Peach. This is in Peach. And this is 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Bamboo and, and Sock. It's 50 grams of sock yarn. So the others were all 100 grams. Was the lace weight 50? No, the lace weight was 50. The other two were 100 and this one's 50 as well. So, yeah. So some new bases there that I've not tried before um, and some really beautiful bright colours. Um, and it's Rainbow Fusions, that's her card, and that's where you can find them. Uh, really bright, colourful yarn, so that was lovely, um, just really to add into my stash, and, you know, if you ever see a rainbow, beautiful rainbow project, then, you know, I've got the yarn for it. Uh, done that one, done that one. Um, oh, I got this book off my mum, um, it's been on my wish list for ages, but this is um, Edward's Menagerie. Um, and it is crochet, yeah, 40 soft and snuggly toy animal crochet patterns. Look at those. 
and it makes there's patterns for all of these in there um yeah i mean you've got like I don't, i'm trying not to show the pattern but you've got like francis the hedgehog and a bit at the front where are they oh I'm trying to find another one. We've got Martin the Tabby Cat. Oh, there's so many beautiful ones. Um, let's see on the back, look. I love the sheep. Uh, make so many different ones. So I think I'm going to make some of these for my girls. Um, yeah, can't wait to knit that. So that looks exciting. So I've got some of those to knit. Um, what else did I get? I also got... so. Sakami so Yarns um, do an, um, right, I'll show you it, an Oh No, Oh Yes box. Um, and again, it's not it's not Oh No, it is Oh Yes. Um, and this is a mix of, um, again, it's just, it's a lucky dip. But it's, it's the idea is to get you to try out different yarn bases. Um, and yeah, just sort of expand your horizons really and try out their yarns. So I've got two of these boxes. Um, so this is the first one that I got. Look at all those beautiful colours. Um, I'll show you them closer up. So this is Zakami. Can you see that? Let me hold it a bit flatter. Zakami yarns. So this one here is 100% fine merino singles in fingering weight called Solitude. I've never knitted with singles before. Um, so if anyone has some really good uh, patterns for singles yarn, um, please let me know below. I'm thinking colour work in a jumper or a hat or, or something like that. But yeah, if anyone has any really good singles patterns. Um, then there's this one. Look at that beautiful label. I love that. Uh, this one is called Felicity. And this is a 60% superwash fine merino and 20% baby alpaca and 20% mulberry silk. Um, and it, again, it's um, sock fingering weight, 100 grams. It was 115 grams actually, so it's um, 460 meters. That's quite a lot in there. Um, that's fingering weight singles again. So that's singles, beautiful. Um, and then this lovely autumnal color. Look at all the beautiful colors in that. Um, this is called Maple of the Sea, um, and this is a 90% fine merino singles and 10% linen, um, 100 gram fingering weight again. That. really beautiful and um, this one here Zakami is called um Gigi Visha, I think um and this is 74% um Suri Alpaca 26% silk 50 grams lace weight non superwash really really is so soft this is really beautiful and then the last one in this box um, it's this beautiful grey with like sort of rusty colours in. It almost reminds me of like industrial steel, uh, like a factory, you know. Um, but this one is called Where the Pumpkins Are. So it's Halloween-y, but it, it feels really industrial to me. Um, and this is 110% superwash fine merino singles again in DK weight, 100 grams. So this box was 55, 55 pounds and you get five skeins of yarn in here. Um that's really good value and it's just you know i've never knitted with singles before um so some new bases in there for me to try and then so i ordered that one before christmas and got that christmas day and then with some christmas money i ordered this one after christmas and it arrived today um so that's really quick postage thank you so much um for, for delivering that so quickly and this is and i because i had sort of autumnal colors um, I did put a note in to see if it's possible, you know, to have non-autumnal colours, just so I had something a bit different. Um, and this is what they've sent through. Hold that up. Oh, I love these colours so much. I mean, I love the autumnal colours. They're not my usual style, but I can see myself knitting with those easily because there's so many, like, greys and purples in with them as well. So this box, I have got this beautiful... Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's so beautiful. Um, and this is called Baby Yaga, and it's 100% brushed Suri Alpaca. There's no silk in it, it's just pure 100% brushed Suri Alpaca in fingering weight, 100 grams. Got that one. That's so pretty. 
Um, and then there's this beautiful sort of tonal pink colourway. And this is, it doesn't have a colour on it, but this is 100% Superwash Fine Merino Sock Weight. So that's just the standard sort of merino sock. Um, and then this one is the same 100% Superwash Fine Merino Sock Weight. And this is in colour Midori 2. And this is like beautiful, um, like greeny. It's not coming across quite as green as it is. It's more green in, in real life, but greeny grey colour. That's beautiful. Then this one, oh my goodness, look at this. It's like a jeweled green. Again, it's more green in real life than it's showing on camera. Um, and this is 100% fine merino singles in sock weight. So again, another singles base. So any ideas, let me know. Really, really beautiful colour. The tonal sort of greens in that. Um, and then this one, and this, oh, look at, look at, the colours are showing up so beautifully. Look at all those colours. Um, and this is 100% Superwash Fine Merino in DK, 100 grams of that. And again, it's such good value. If you don't mind what you're getting and just want to explore different colours and yarn bases, um, I don't know if they've got any yes-no boxes left, but they do do them a couple of times a year. Um, it's absolutely worth <laughs> worth doing it because it says it works out just over £10 a skein um, and it isn't oh no it is oh yes um, and it, I think it's, it's, it's gorgeous okay so I also got I also ordered um, Emma from Moo and Mouse was doing like a Christmas box Christmas party box um, and so there was all sorts of surprise surprises inside so I ordered one of those and I opened it Christmas Day and it's this beautiful, so this is Harriet the Hedgehog and this is the Christmas Party Bag by Moo and Mouse. Really, really beautiful, um, beautiful sewing and beautiful fabrics. Um, and Harriet, look how beautiful she looks in her party frock. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's by Moo and Mouse. And inside the box there was this bag, but there was also some goodies. So I will show you. So I got this lovely Cadbury's Fabulous Fingers, double dipped in two lots of chocolate. Thank you. Uh, got that. Um, I got this beautiful um, sort of woodland gift card. It's a blank gift card. So you colour it and then give it to someone with an envelope. And it says on the back, coloured for you by. So I'll be colouring that one in and sending that off as a gift to somebody. Um, little lavender pouch a little fox on and a little robin on the back and uh does smell delicious um there was a couple of truffles a couple of little chocolates uh they're not going back in they're going over there because so i'm going to eat those very shortly and there was a beautiful it was a collaboration with um suzanne of green lambkin yarn and there was this beautiful beautiful um yarn that was dyed specially for the kit so this is called harriet's christmas party and it's by green lambkin yarns oh and it's um it's a sparkle sock base so it's 75 percent merino 20 percent nylon five percent stilina superwash and it's yeah harriet's christmas party <gasps> look at that can you see the sparkle in it oh you can it, it's much more sparkly in real life but you can see the spark that's really really beautiful um and there's this lovely little star stitch marker on there um and yeah and that's um that's emma's emma's card i got my finger over over the important bit haven't i yeah so i will be casting on something with that or i might save it for next christmas and make some christmas socks um i haven't decided so i got that beautiful bag um and that is it. I did do a swap. Do you remember in my last podcast, I said I did a swap with my... Do you know what? I'll have a drink. I I've talked for 40 minutes and I haven't had a drink yet and this will be cold. Mm. I do like a nice berry tea. Mm. Okay. I did a swap with my friend Cherie from Ollie and Bella. Um, so I thought I would just show you... That's just the packaging. Um, I will show you what she got me. Um, so I got this lovely bag. It's all like water bottles and teas and cups and things like that. Um, and this bag is from 
Bertie and Poppet, who are based in Nottingham in the UK. Bertie and Poppet, and that beautiful lining fabric. That's really nice, isn't it? And then inside she gave me some Ducky Darlings yarn. So I've never had any of their yarn before. Got my stitch mark on it. Some Ducky Darlings yarn, and this is called Sister Sets. Um, it's a 75-25. Um, so that'll make a really nice pair of socks at some point. Um, there was also, there was a huge bar of chocolate orange, but I ate that a long time ago. Um, so I can't show you that. Um, pretty Yankee candle called Pecan Pie. It smells delicious. Um, lovely bar of handmade wood, woodland bluebell soap. You can't see it because it's in a packet, but there is a soap in here. And a pretty, oh, this is the stitch marker that came with the Bertie and Poppet. That's Bertie and Poppet. That's their business card. That's a cute little stitch marker on there. Um, and a, oh, there was, there was a notebook. Hang on. Um, a sachet of soak for knitting, for washing my woolens. Um, and there was, where is it? A beautiful notebook with an S on for Stacey. Um, and yeah. So that's really lovely and in the back is where we've been making all the notes for our spring equa socks cal um that we're going to be doing in spring so we touched on that in the last one but i won't we won't talk about it yet because we haven't sort of come up with any more plans but so that's that so that is all my yarn content um, I feel like there was a lot of acquisitions and I'm really sorry, but most of it was Christmas gifts and I didn't really buy much of it myself. So, and I've got lots to keep me going. Um, so it's really exciting. So I keep looking around. Is there anything else? No, I probably made you really dizzy by shaking my head back a lot. Uh, nothing else there. Um, so just a little bit of a life update. Um, my mum came round for Christmas. Yay. Um, it was so good. Um, she's eating eating fully by herself now and um, she's not eating through a drip or or anything like that she's completely eating herself she's able to get up and down the stairs in her flat so she lives on the first floor flat so she's able to get down the stairs to the ground floor and um, she's been in the car she came around on christmas eve and christmas day um on christmas eve we have our christmas dinner because i don't like to be sort of in the kitchen all day on christmas day cooking and then you know an hour washing up and all that jazz um so we do our christmas dinner on christmas eve to save christmas day um so my mum came around christmas eve and she ate a little bit of everything she had a brussels sprout she had a pig in blanket roast potato um she can't have anything sweet at the moment she just doesn't enjoy it she, it's too much for her um but yeah so she was able to eat everything and then she came around again on christmas day when we swapped our presents which was really lovely um so yeah, she's still a long way off being fully fit. Her wound in her stomach, the actual physical where they cut her open, um, hasn't fully healed yet. So she's still having nurses around two or three times a week to put bandages on that, put dressings on it and um, to keep it sterile. While that slowly heals, um, she lost a lot of her hair as well. So that's slowly growing back. Um, and she's very weak. Um, so she can't, you know, she can't go out for long periods of time and she hasn't really been out walking much from set from the car to the bit to the house or whatever. Um, but hopefully within the next 12 months, um, yeah, hopefully she'll be back to normal. And when the weather improves, um, hoping she'll be able to go out for some walks. Um, the weight, you know, because the whole obviously if you followed this from from my podcast at the end of July, um, you'll realise that it was a gastro bypass surgery that went wrong basically so the whole part part point of the surgery was to lose weight and she is losing weight um so i think that's helping to keep her motivated that she has lost a lot of weight already and she is still losing weight and um, because that was the original point there would be no point of having gone through all of this um to not lose weight so yeah that's good um we had a lovely christmas um, I have three daughters and age 14, 8 and 7 and um, they got lots of lovely toys. Um, try to keep it as practical as possible, you know, like crafting toys because they're disposable. Once you've done the craft, it can go like toys like that. Um, got a lot of clothes, um, 
chocolate, <laughs> a few things like Barbies and dollies and stuff like that. So they were really spoiled. Uh, my oldest daughter got a new phone. Um, my husband got some beer. Uh, train. He's into model railways, so he got some new train track for his train set. Um, yeah, it was a really, really lovely Christmas. Um, we went to Eden Project in December, so I'm sure you've probably heard of the Eden Project. Hang on, I need a drink. Um, I'm sure you've probably heard of the Eden Project, um, but it's a large sort of domed garden in, in, in um, down in Cornwall in St Austell. And we are members because we live in Devon, Cornwall, we get like a locals pass. So it's a lot cheaper for us to go and it's a whole year pass. Um, and we had booked to go. We, we like to go every Christmas and go and see Father Christmas and all the domes are lit up. I'll try and put some pictures in and, um, at the end. Um, and all the domes are lit up beautifully. Um, and last year we were booked to go on the 23rd of December. And we hadn't told the children because of COVID. We were like, you know what? It could be cancelled. We don't want to raise their hopes. And in the morning of the 23rd of December, the Eden Project had a huge landslide. And half of their whole wall of their, they're sort of built inside an old, um, an old mine. There's a lot of mining in Cornwall. So it's a big old sort of mine hole in the ground. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. Crater. That's not really a crater, but um, it's built in inside in the bottom of there. And one whole side of it sort of came down in a huge landslide. Um, so they had to close and cancel so we couldn't go last year. So this year we booked. We didn't tell the children until we were in the car on the way. Um, and we'd booked to go ice skating because they have an ice rink there. So it's just, it was their first ever time ice skating and they loved it. Um, so we did ice skating and then we walked around the domes and then we went to see Father Christmas and it's a really wonderful experience. You go in as a group um, and they hadn't overbooked. Eden Project kept the numbers down quite low um, so it wasn't busy. It was really lovely and quiet. Um, and you, But you go in as a group to see Father Christmas and you sit there and he tells you a story and he's got his elves there that, you know, participate in the story. Um and then um, you queue up and each family gets to see him individually and you get a special gift. So in previous years, you've been given a special star, um, which you put under your, you can put under your pillow as a special wish. Um, and then two years ago when we went, they got a key, um, a magic key that you hang up um, so Father Christmas can come into the house. Um, so we've got the magic key. Um, and this year it was magic bioluminescence rain rain reindeer dust and it's in a little glass tube all sealed with wax um, and if you shine a torch on it all day or you know you like to sort of charge it during the day um, then the reindeer's eyes shine on it and they know where your house is and they can see that so they don't get lost because there's so many houses and GPS doesn't work for reindeers um, so we've got this light that um, and it doesn't matter if no one else on our street has one the reindeers will see the lights in our house and they'll know that there are some children in that area that need presents um, so we got some rainbow and um, some reindeer um, bioluminescence light <laughs> this year. So it's always a lovely thought out um, little thing. Um, but if you're in the area or even if, you know, if you're down here on holiday, it's worth booking into the Eden Project. It's absolutely stunning. Um, and we like to go several times a year anyway, but at Christmas it is particularly beautiful. Um, and that's about it, really. Um, it's been pretty quiet. We've been doing lateral flow testing for COVID um, and we are clear so far. Um, but, you know, the kids will be back at school next week. I work in a school as well and I'm back to work next week. My husband's a police officer. And so he's been at work the whole, all the way. He had four days off over Christmas, which was nice. His four, his four, four days off fell over Christmas this year, um, but he's back at work. So we're carrying on with our lateral flow testing because we're just in those sorts of roles where it's likely to be picked up. Um, and with my mum being vulnerable um, and, you know, other elderly grandparents. My dad is, um, my dad turns 70 in uh, next weekend. So, you know, we just want to be, yeah, careful. Um, but I hope you're all uh, had a lovely Christmas and that you're going to have a lovely new year. I'm not doing anything tonight. My husband is working. My eldest is going to stay with my, with her aunt and uncle. Um with my brother-in-law and so it's just me and the two little girls 
and I don't do late nights. So I'll be, they'll go to bed, I'll go to bed, I'll put my phone on silent. <laughs> Probably wake up at midnight when people in the street do fireworks. Um, and then, yeah, that's it really. There's only a few more days till I'm back at work, which is rubbish, isn't it? But, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, winner of the, oh goodness me, winner of the giveaway for the pattern. Um, so the pattern, I'll put another picture here, is the Heavenly Peace Socks by Becky Norman. Um, she's Bexy Norms on Instagram. Um, and there were 14 entries, 14 comments, entries for it. And the winner is um, Periwinkle Stitches. Um, the lovely kit at Periwinkle Stitches. So you have won a copy of that pattern um, kit. So if you want to message, um, I'll message Becky and let her know that you were the winner. And so if you message her, she'll be able to arrange to get the pattern to you. However, that works. Um, I know you're on Instagram, so yeah, you should be able to message her directly. Um, yeah, congratulations. And uh, thank you to everyone that commented and told me all your colours. I think um, Catherine's were uh, red and red and grey or pink and grey, anything with pink or red and pink, I think she said. Anything with pink. Um, so I can't wait to see you knit those socks up. Um, I'm going to be doing mine in like a burgundy and green, I think. I've got like a really lovely pale green, mm, I think. Uh, so yeah, so that's my plan. Um, right, well, I can't believe I'm nearly on an hour and I only had two bits of knitting to show you. So um, I will sign off for now and hopefully see you again in a month or two um, and I'll have a bit more to show you. Uh, but thank you very much. Um, yeah, bye.